Hello YouTube, welcome back to this week's video. This is 2E0 IQJ and 26 Tango Micro 062. Check it out. We got ourselves a mesh tastic device and I bought something called a Lora 32. I think it's about 23 quid this was delivered from eBay. It's an 863 to 928 megs device. Lora Wi-Fi BLE and it's got a 0.96 inch, uh, 128 times 64 OLED low low power management heltech.cn so in the box i got the device itself which is tiny check that out and also got the antenna now my antenna is a stubby antenna i'll show you in a minute why it won't fit into my case that i got and it just connects to the socket there just put, fits in so i didn't want to power it up without having the antenna connected on the side we've got ourselves a usb socket there so that's usb c on the back, your connection there for your power, which you can, uh, which is included in the box, but you can just power it up off USB-C, and there is the screen there. Now the antenna itself, you can actually just unscrew it and take it off and put it onto a bigger antenna if you wish to do so. Also in the box, you've got a set of pin headers, which you can then solder on, onto here I'm not going to do that and you've got the power connection here so it connects to the back of the board and you can then power it up off a like a 4.5 volt battery I've seen people do that and stick the battery on the back of the case and then the USB C there will recharge the uh, battery now you do need to supply your own USB C cable and the case I got was one of these from like the Heltec that comes with it, it was about seven quid, I think I paid for the case. But as you can see, my aerial doesn't fit. It's too big, it's too thick and too big. Now, some of the devices I've seen, they come with like a curly antenna. And you can wrap the wire around there and it sits into there. And you can have that as your case. But what I've been doing with mine is having my wire hanging outside. And I use a rubber band tightly around the top and then connect to the aerial that way. So let's go over to the computer. I'll show you how to flash the firmware and get this thing set up. Okay, so over on the computer, the website you want to head to is meshtastic.org, which I'll link in the description below. I'm going to click on Get Started. Now, you need to install serial drivers. If you're on a Mac, it should just work out of the box. If you're on Linux, it should work out of the box. And Windows, you need to install the driver. So we're going to click on Install Serial Drivers. And I've got an ESP32. We're going to click on ESP32 drivers. And there is drivers there for Mac. If it doesn't work, you can install these drivers. There is drivers there for Linux. And there's drivers there for Windows. So we're going to click on Mac OS. Go to the bottom of the page. We're going to click on Flash ESP32 firmware. Now we go to the bottom of this page. And they recommend using the web based installer. You can read all that if you want to, but I'm just going to go straight to the bottom and click on Web Flasher, which is recommended. Now it's time to plug in the device, which I've already done. We're going to visit flasher.meshtastic.org. requires a Chrome or Edge browser. I'm going to click on this link, and this website will appear. This is a similar process to flashing the firmware on that um, UVK5 radio. Select our target. I've got a Heltec V3, and if you go down, you can see different things are there. I'm just going to click on Heltec V3, select firmware version, click on the latest one, 2.2.24, and we're going to click on Flash. And you can read all the information here if you want to read it. We're just going to click on Continue. It tells you if you've got an ESP32-S3 base, you may need to turn it off and on and so on. Leave all this as standard, and I'm going to tick here. It says for erase and install. Click on erase flash and install. This box will appear. You can then select your USB driver, so that's my one there, and press on connect. And I'm not going to do that because I've already flashed the firmware to the uh, device. It'll take a few minutes. Once that's done, it should just reboot and you should be up and running with the mesh tastic firmware. Okay, so I've put my mesh tastic into the case. Unfortunately, I got the wire hanging outside, as I showed you earlier. Antenna won't fit, it's too stubby. And normally I have it like this and I have a rubber band around the top to keep it in place. Now you will need some way of powering it up. You can use the battery or you can that you can put on the back 
or you can use a USB power bank, which I'm going to use in this video. Let's give it up some power. You'll see there, it's booting up with the meshtastic.org. And it will take a few seconds to boot. And you see there, that is now booted. And you see there, I've already found a node on the screen. This is what I found yesterday when I was playing around. So if you head over to the phone and go to the Meshtastic app, it'll ask you to connect the radio via Bluetooth, which is what I've already done. And you'll see there, it says 26TM062, which is what I've called it. If we press on Settings and go to uh, User, the top there you've got long name and short name. I've left the short name as it is. 26TM062 is what I've called it. You can just tap it at the top and give it the name and then you can save it. You can also tell it you're a licensed ham operator. Some people have put their call signs in, but I haven't done that. I'm just going to leave it as 26 Tango Mike 062. I'm going to leave everything else as standard. You can have a look through there and play around with what it what you can do. If you press on nodes. You'll see here I found four nodes. So there's the top one's mine. There's one called Z4 Base. There's one called Solar Node and one called Meshtastic C, uh, 6C32, which I found on the way home uh, yesterday from work. Now I can click on one, say Z4 Base, and it gives you the node number, user ID, and so on. What the signal's like at the moment, it says signal bad because that's over a mile and a half away. And you can click on a node nap. You can click on the position log, it tells you the position of it. You can do the device and metrics log. If I go back, if I want to trace its route, where it's going to, or where it's been to, just press and hold on, say Z4 base, and I can then do a, set it as a favourite, hide alerts, trace the route, or I can delete the node if I don't want it on there. But you go to messages, and you'll see here we've got channels and direct messages. Now, like I said earlier, I have st well, I didn't I think I said earlier, but I'm still new to MeshTastic and I'm still going to be playing with it for a while. So if I click on channels, I'm not sure what's going to appear here. And probably get some channels that come up, but I've got nothing here on mine. It just says primary channel zero. I'm not going to put a message there if I want to. So direct messages, I'm going to press on direct message. And you can do direct messages to the different nodes. So for example, yesterday I tried to do a hello to the um, Z4 base. And it got acknowledged, then I went back in the evening, said the evening, just done another test, did a range test this morning. It works, just to test it again. It said max uh, retransmission reached, because it couldn't make connection. I tried to start afternoon, still couldn't make connection, that was over two miles away. So yesterday, I was close to it, about half a mile away. It worked. Today I tried it two miles or so away, it didn't work. But like I say, I'm new to mesh test it, and I'm still going to be playing around, around with it. If I do it on the solar node, You'll see there it says it uh, ACP came from another node. Now, I don't know what that means. I tried to ping this one and say hello to it, see if anyone would come back to me and make a contact, and nothing came back. It just kept saying uh, this one here uh, from another node. And this one here, Meshtastic, I think I know where that one is. I'll go past it tomorrow on the way to work, away from work, and I'll try and make some uh, contacts on the Meshtastic. Now, in a future video, I want to go out and about and I want to uh, do, do a a test up a high spot somewhere all over London see if I can make any more see if I can make contacts see if any more nodes appear now do I need to set the, the phone to do the nodes or will it just automatically appear and then when I resync it to the phone it comes up on the phone because the Meshtastic uh, 6C32 came up on my phone uh, came up on a node here and I didn't appear on the phone until I quit the app and went back into the app now here you can reboot your device or here you can cycle through the nodes. So I can go through the nodes there. And you can press that one and it reboots the device. And then it starts back up again. And there we go, start it back up again. That takes a few seconds. And that's basically it. So do I need to uh, do anything with the phone? Should it just appear on the phone? Or should it just automatically appear on here? I've, like I say, I'm still new to this. I'm still playing around with it. Anyhow, hopefully this has helped someone or helped people set their mesh tastic up. I've been playing around with this now for a few days. I only got it like Saturday. Playing around for a few days. I want to go to some high spots, see if I can make, any, uh, make some contacts on mesh tastic. But so far, what I'm playing with, I like mucking about with this sort of stuff. It's cool. I do want to get the 435 megs or 433 meg one as well. Maybe I'm going to get one that's got a little curly antenna to fit into this case here. 
and I'm going to get another case for this one here so, so I don't damage the cable on the antenna. Anyhow, if you've got one of these mesh test devices, how are you finding it? You made any contacts on the device yet? I've certainly made none. I've attempted to, and I've made I've put some calls out, and basically nothing's come back to me. I'd like to say thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it of some use, you need to give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you can press the other button, but I don't think it works. Anyhow, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. This is 2E0IQJ. 7-3 is for now.